So, uh, hi there, my name is Eli. Um, who here like wanted to be a project manager when they were a little kid? Like, hand up. <laughs> yeah, see, because all of us follow these accidental paths through our lives. Um, and, and I'll talk a little bit about some of my accidental paths as well, which has all kinds of good things, but it means I'm really bad at the official part. So, and we'll see where this trips me up. So uh, we're going to have a couple of case studies here today about things that worked out really well when people brought project management best practices to bear. I'm going to talk a little bit about what happens when you try to fake it. <laughs> so uh, hi there, my name is Eli Van de Giesen. Um, at the moment, I work for a U.S. nonprofit called TechSoup, um, and one of the projects in the way I sort of got involved is they've got this free nonprofit technology meetup called NetSquare Vancouver that basically comes together once a month to help nonprofits figure out how do they bring technology into their work. And in fact, crazy coincidence, tonight's event that starts at 6 o'clock is actually about agile project management for nonprofits. So uh, I did not even plan that. It was just a weird coincidence that it all sort of happened that way. I'll share links later, but uh, let me keep moving because I got 10 minutes. So, uh, project managers at nonprofits, I've been around the sector for 10 years, never seen one. Don't exist, think they're a myth. Um, but every once in a while they sneak into your life, but, uh, but they're, a, they're a rare breed of people who call themselves project managers. Because we're all accidental. I am notes to show up for some reason, I just want to come in. Who knows? I'll fake it. So uh, this is what I do. Um, so yeah, so I'm currently an accidental volunteer manager who didn't figure out how to do that until I was suddenly doing it. Before that, I came in as an accidental techie, running sort of email marketing campaigns over the David Suzuki Foundation. And before that, I showed up at a nonprofit in Edmonton called the Edmonton Folk Music Festival. And they're like, hey, why don't you be the assistant production manager? And I'm like, sure, what does that mean? All I knew is I was excited they were going to pay me a pittance to do something I used to volunteer for. So that was fabulous. I was really excited about that whole idea. But what I figured out many, many years later, but did not know at the time, is actually production manager it is a project. Um, and so I went in and started learning on the job, and uh, some parts worked out really well, and some parts I never quite figured out. So here's the Folk Music Festival. I got together with a group of 120 volunteers, and we put up 10 kilometers of fence, 80 tents, and we invited 40,000 of our best friends to come and party with us for a weekend. It's a big to-do, um, and uh, and basically my job was to sit at a desk for three months ahead of the event and just start scheduling. All the trucks, all the fence, all the volunteers, make sure that we could basically build a city, tear it down, um, and then go to bed after three months because we were burnt out. So, so that was really my introduction into the practicalities of project management. Um, I was, as you can guess, being over my head. Luckily, there were other smarter people around me. Because I didn't know anything. Truly, truly nothing. You know how dumb I was? I had no idea that there was a difference between a project and a program. And I totally used the words interchangeably. And it basically did until five years ago when I ran into the project management volunteer people and they were like, hey idiot, you know how to keep on failing in the exact same way? There's a reason. And the reason is because you don't get the very basic foundations of how to actually make these projects work. Um, and so for me, when I first discovered the project management volunteers, it was like running into like a psychologist who diagnosed my craziness. He's like, this is why you've been feeling crazy all these years, because you didn't understand what was going on. Um, and so that was pretty eye-opening to me. This is the thing that blew my mind. I'd never heard of the word, um, and it was the missing piece. Over the previous 10 years, I thought I'd gotten pretty good at 
the practicalities of how to make sure you can throw a party for 40,000 people and actually open the doors when they show up. So I'm like, I'm a success story. Look at this. Like, you know, it works. But um, but I, I said this did work. And I was like, why did it sometimes not work? And this two pages was totally the reason why. Because it's things like this word I'd never heard of, scope. Whoa. <laughs> Never heard of it, honest to goodness, never heard of it. Because I never had an agreement up front with anyone about what's actually within and without this project. And if you don't have that, look, here's the deal. I, of course, am preaching to the converted, you know. You're going to go to Mecca and tell people about Allah. It's like, well, of course you guys know all of that stuff. I didn't, because I am an idiot. Um, but, this idiot has five more minutes, so it's going to keep going. So let me tell you about disasters. I'm going to tell you just about how usually I was thought as a good project manager, but every once in a while, it all fell apart in the worst possible ways, in ways that had me running, screaming for my previous job, burnt out, disappointed, and with maybe not the reputation I wanted as I left. So I was there at the David Suzuki Foundation, running basically the whole online marketing team. You know, email campaigns every day, websites, forums, acquisition campaigns, social media, all that jazz. Super fun. Um, and I had a problem, so I brought in Salesforce to help solve that problem, because I needed ways to track my email campaigns, do all my forms, all that good lead conversion stuff. And Salesforce will come to nonprofits and say, hey, here are 10 free enterprise relationships. Go crazy. Of course, smart people in the room know that it's more free, and puppies not free as in beer, it's never free. Um, and I quickly figured that stuff out. So I came in and said, well, let's do this thing, grassroots. I'm like, I'm just going to go solve my own problem. I don't need to get anyone's permission. It didn't cost anything, no problem. Um, and so I just started like, building it out, swapping out the forms. Um, and that sort of worked out OK as I was solving my own problems, because I control my own scope. I'm not a crazy person. But sometimes I'm a person who's bad at saying no. So other people in the organization would walk up to me in a way that I'm sure has happened to you and said, like, that looks really interesting. Do you think you could solve my problems? And of course I said, I don't know, let's find out. Um, and so we like we started adding like, oh, is that the volunteer management program into that? And they're like, oh, maybe we'll start tracking interactions at the front desk so we can start figuring out what are the contributions of, of those people into the wider marketing of the organization? So the scope just uh, kept on creeping up. And of course, I had no budget. The reason I didn't need permission, of course, is it didn't cost money um, to bring those 10 licenses in. But it, like, you know, Salesforce are idiots. They know that they're going to get to it free and then they start building it up. So eventually, I had so much data in the system, I'm like, ooh, I have this bill that needs to get paid to deal with all the extra data. I'm like, ooh. I'm going to pay for the email marketing attachment program. Totally unprepared for all of these budget things. And of course, I could go to my boss and say, like, hey, I've got all these problems. He's like, awesome. Never heard of it because I never had a sponsor sign on to this thing. Um, and so, senior leadership, of course, had no buying off to this because this is the first they'd ever heard of it. They're, you know, they're like, what is this thing? Why should I care? And course, it meant that I was in over my head, because guess who is not a database expert? Guess who doesn't know about CRMs? This guy. Um, so quickly, I was like, oh, I need consultants, I need more time, all these people want support of the system, I had no staffing, no budgeting, it was a lot of tears, super sad times, um, and so what it really turned into is me spending two hours after everyone had gone home every day trying to catch up and fix the system that was sort of falling apart around me. Um, and ultimately, after two years of that, I had to walk away from the organization, just completely burnt out. Um, and I left a burning fire, like fire, like for the organization to deal with, because I'm like, here's this thing that you are mostly relying on now that doesn't work, and I need to go. Um, so that is me at my not best. Hopefully you guys aren't looking at me too kind of someone like me right now because I really um, shit the bed a little bit there. Anyways, usually I'm better than that. 
Um, so this is just to say uh, we need project management skills and organizations because even just the basic things, if I had that charter done, then all the other process, all the other stuff, that's just me. But if I could just solve the initial problems I talked about there by having upfront agreement, you have way less tears. I might start a great job at the Canadian Security Foundation. Who knows what the world could look like? Um, so tonight, when you're looking for of course you're not exhausted from all of this today. I've now got about 110 people who've already agreed to join us for Agile Project Management for Nonprofits. It's free, it's fun. If you haven't shown up there yet, well. Course, RSVP. Um, and in my last 30 seconds, I should tell you a little bit more about this organization, TechSoup, I work for. Which is to say, if you ever work with nonprofit clients, churches, or libraries, and they have a software need, they should not spend money on that software. Uh, what TechSoup has done is they are basically the validation partner for about 100 technology companies, everyone from Google, to Cisco, to Microsoft, to Adobe, and what they do is a nonprofit creates a free account at TechSoup, which basically verifies that they are a legit nonprofit. And then what happens is they go to TechSoup and say, like, oh, it's like Amazon, looks like it's like that. And that looks pretty great. You throw things into your little uh, shopping cart, and then you walk away, and that software is like 90% off of this price, or through other things like the Google for Nonprofits program. Nonprofits get access through that text validation to ten thousand dollars every month of free Google AdWords. So before your nonprofit friends spend money, check out TechSoup first. We've saved the sector six billion dollars so far, and we just started. We just only last year went fully global. So uh, that's me. Now you're going to talk. Most of you going to talk a little bit about successes um, <laughs> because because they exist. It's not always sad times and tears. Um, I'll be around, so if anyone wants to learn more about my fun meetup or about TechSoup, pick up business cards, you can shit, or have gossip, it'll be good times. Thank you so much. On to the next people. We're almost on schedule.